Hello, ladies and gentlemen, crypto deep divers. Welcome back to Weekly Crypto. So today I'm going to talk about Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and I will touch on Binance as well. And I will also talk about how future market volume can be harmful for Bitcoin. So before we get into that, um, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out the upcoming airdrop uh, giveaway half fault. Also, you can follow me on Twitter as well. In my previous video, I talked about Ethereum, uh, the USD long position has been building up. And I also talked about that probably they will pump uh, even more before they will liquidate the long position. But we never know, I could be wrong too, right? And I suspect that they, uh, they may continue to pump. And once they pump at a certain level, they're going to liquidate the long position and sell Ethereum. Just be careful out there. And this is not a financial advice. Please use your due diligence. And, and nobody has a crystal ball either. In terms of Litecoin, uh, so I don't know if you still remember, Litecoin has been pumping since uh, from 30 bucks to all the way to 50 bucks. And you can see the uh, Litecoin USD long position has been building up. And I'm not sure how far they're going to pump. Maybe they will pump a little bit more before they liquidate the uh, Litecoin long positions. So once they liquidate the long positions, they need to sell Litecoin. And in terms of Bitcoin, uh, at this level, I'm not going to FOMO in or anything. And um, I'm not surprised that they may pump even higher for the Bitcoin. But I could be wrong as well. Um, maybe it can go all, all the way to 45, uh, 4, 3, 4,300 as well, I don't know. So nobody have a crystal ball, but I'm just saying that anything could happen in crypto and just be careful out there. And I'm not going to FOMO in on anything. And the only time you buy is when nobody wants to buy. Right now, it seems like there's a lot of bullish sentiment out there. I don't think it's a good idea to buy anything. And also you can see the RSI is uh, a little bit uh, extended uh, at this time. I'm not going to buy anything at this time. <clears throat> And plus, I don't have the time to monitor day to day. And I'm not a day trader. And most of the day trader is going to lose money. And only less than 1% of the very professional day trader, uh, they make money. So don't waste your time. Even a professional day trader uh, is only less than 1% make money. So don't waste your time if you less than maybe one year or two years in, in terms of like trading. I don't think it's a good idea to do day trade. And even swing trade, uh, it could be tricky too. But swing trade is you're talking about uh, weeks to to months before you uh, buy and uh, liquidate your position. So I mean, if you don't have the time, I would just say just forget it. You know. Uh, so another thing I want to point out. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Let me see. In terms of Binance, uh, a lot of people talk about Binance and all that. I don't think it's a good time to get in at all when everybody right now is basically at all-time high Binance and it's above the moving average. And I don't think it's a good idea to buy at all. So Binance, everybody talk about it and I don't think it's a good time to buy. And to me, Bitcoin is followed the 2013 to 2014, uh, the bear market cycle. If you go back to 2013 to 2014 bear market cycle, there's a period, uh, this period is of the sideway, long period of sideway. It goes up and down, bouncing up and down, bouncing up and down, and then uh, finally go to capitulation, and then finally we have a bull run. But uh, one last thing I just want to say uh, before we move on to the future volume. <coughs> Let's see, let me go back to the other one. So when you look at this uh, chart compared to this one, I asked about the Wall Street cheat sheet psychology of uh, market cycle. Do you think Bitcoin has finished the market cycle? Uh, are we in capitulation, anger, depression, or disbelief stage? Which stage are we at right now? So you put this side by side. So you probably have the answer. I asked about this uh, psychology of market cycle back in August, and I, obviously a lot of people guess it wrong. So just go back to the basic basics. If you don't know any about technical analysis, just put those charts side by side. You have your answer. Um, if they haven't finished, if they if they, if they haven't finished the market cycle, uh, they will be very difficult to have a bull run. And let's talk about that article uh, regarding 
the future market volume can be harmful for Bitcoin. And this is uh, published by Super Crypto. And he made the right call when Bitcoin at 20,000, everybody is on euphoria and everybody's saying it's going to, hard, going to go higher. And at the time, he's the contrarian. And he said uh, Bitcoin is going to have a big major correction, 95% correction. And exactly this is right. From 20,000, we drop all the way uh, down to around 3,200 uh, level. So, so he, he talked about... <clears throat> So he basically uh, talked about uh, the how the CME future uh, market, the future market can affect the price of Bitcoin. So this is where the cartel came into the picture in the initial stage. They pumped the price very high from 2K to 20,000. Remember back in 2017? And they collect lots of Bitcoin and successfully dropped the price since then. Ever since the introdu introduction of the CME CBOE future contract, the price of Bitcoin has been pummeled, right? From 20,000 right now all the way down uh, to almost 3,000 to uh, level. And uh, the bar th this bear market has been pretty uh, extended actually. <clears throat> So this price pressure will continue until the volumes on the future exchange CME, NASDAQ and um, and then we may possibly have another huge rally that will burn many folks once again. Remember at 20,000, even a grandma want to buy a piece of this. They don't even know what is Bitcoin. They just want a piece of that. So this will happen again. I mean, history repeats itself, just like the dot-com bubble as well. And this is from someone on gold and silver side explaining how Bitcoin is being manipulated down. So you can learn from those who have experienced it firsthand for eight years, those metal traders. And because uh, of the introduction of the uh, gold and silver future contract, the price has been suppressed ever since then, even uranium. <clears throat> so uh, this is published on February 20th, 2018, which is uh, yeah, last year. By now, uh, most understand how the bank manipulate the price of physical metal through the use of paper derivatives. And uh, basically, the future will tail wagging the spot dog, basically wagging the spot price of the, uh, of the uh, metal price, silver or gold. In BTC future, it is quite clear that the banks manipulate in the opposite. The last price uh, run up into the start of the BTC uh, Bitcoin futures was in no doubt primarily fueled by mass accumulation of actual Bitcoin by the future market making banks. These same banks now profit in Bitcoin futures through the dumping and buying all the actual Bitcoin. The Bitcoin moves and the future respond and, and not the other way around. So this is back in, uh, remember this is back in February 20th, 20th 2018. Okay, it was last year. <clears throat> Sell short some uh, Bitcoin future and then dump some Bitcoin. Cover your Bitcoin short at a uh, at a healthy profit. Buy some Bitcoin future and then buy back your Bitcoin. Sell your Bitcoin future at a healthy profit. And so why volume matters? Futures market is all about volume. Price can be controlled only when future have extremely high volume where intrinsic real value is suppressed by the subjective or the confidence price. So this is basically called tail wagging the dog. Uh, you can, I mean, if you don't know what is that, you can uh, watch the video from uh, Jim Ricketts. So this is basically simply how the financial market work in the 21st century. I mean, I'm not surprised at all. Come on. So the volume on the CME and CBOE um, is very little compared to the big mix. So cartel, those price manipulation, uh, manipulation cartel, cannot do anything unless volume grow on those CME and C, uh, CBOE future, uh, future contract market. So this is the future volume for Q4 2018. You can see BitMix uh, October, November, and December. The future contract has been building up in BitMix. And I think it went on talk about Bitcoin future overtake uh, coin-base trading volume. You can see the CME Bitcoin future the vo in terms of uh, trading uh, volume, has been overtaken by Coinbase as the spot Bitcoin price. This is Coinbase. So you can see uh, back in December, uh, uh, Coinbase have huge volume, and you can see the CME future contract has not much volume. Now it's reversing. That has CBOE fu uh, CME future contract future has much, much higher volume than Coinbase.
it makes perfect sense because I... So health volume is growing. So CME Group report uh, Bitcoin volume uh, int uh, and interest up in November 2018, which is last year, <clears throat> a few months ago. You can see this is the database on November. You can see November, you have 5,988 contracts in the average daily volume, which is 145 million, equivalent to 30,000 Bitcoin, and which is up over 141% versus October. In October, you can you, don't, you only have 2485 contract, and in November, all of a sudden, it's, it's, it's a big spike. So the average open interest up uh, 3395 as well. Which is thirty percent, thirty percent versus uh, during uh, the record in July. So you have record uh, forty four large open interest hold, uh, holder, uh, which is up twenty one percent versus October, and over one thousand nine hundred active accounts trading. So in terms of volume of other commodities in the future market, you can see the Bitcoin volume is very tiny, tiny compared to gold and silver or the W2, WTI crude oil and also net gas wheat. So Bitcoin volume is nothing. It's not a peanut compared to the whole future contract market. And higher interest, which means greater price manipulation. And in terms of gold, uh, over 500,000 contracts on the CME, which is 61 billion. For Bitcoin, you have over 8,000 contracts, CBOE plus CME, which is uh, over 13,000 Bitcoin, which is 158 million. So it's nothing. Gold has 300 times more future volume than Bitcoin. And do you know what happened when Bitcoin volume becomes 61 billion? Increasing volume on the future market does not go well with Bitcoin price, as you... This has been, as you have seen in gold and silver uh, market, has been suppressed ever since then. So this is another interesting gold future market suppression chart. You can see the imports of gold uh, has been skyrocketing. And yet the price of gold has crashed 40% since 2011. You can see also how many imports in terms of uh, tons, uh, Net import tons, they have been uh, increasing, increasing, and right now a little bit uh, here. So, but the thing is, the gold price has not been increased. It, on the opposite, it has crashed, you know, 40% since 2011. I think 2011 uh, is at the time, pri uh, the price of gold is at all time high, almost 2000. <clears throat> so, NASDAQ, they confirmed they will list Bitcoin futures. This is not a good news uh, for Bitcoin, just like gold and silver that will increase the paper supply of Bitcoin. And I don't know if you still remember back in 2017, a lot of YouTubers, especially the big YouTubers saying that, oh, with the institution money coming in, with the future market, we'll boost up the price. I mean, they are too, uh, how can I say? They, they are too naive. The thing is, anytime institution come in, they are not, they are not going here, they are not here to, uh, you know, doing charity, they're going to make money. In order to make money, they're going to get the money from the little guy, right? That's how they make money. So that's that's the wealth transfer, right? That's why you have the top 1%. And CME Future Market will create 210, uh, 210 million paper copies of Bitcoin. Why 210? Because of the, uh, remember, the Federal Reserve requirement, fractional reserve uh, requirement. Uh, fictional reserve requirement is basically if you go to the bank, you deposit uh, ten thousand. The reserve requirement, if the if the net transaction account from uh, sixteen point three million to one twenty four to uh, one twenty uh, hundred twenty four point two million, you only need three percent reserve. If you are if your asset over one hundred twenty four point two million, you need ten percent reserve requirement. Basically, if you go to the bank, you deposit ten thousand. They only need three hundred. Uh, reserve or a thousand reserve. The rest nine thousand or nine thousand seven hundred. They are going to loan it out to the consumer, to as a student loan, as a automobile loan, or a private loan, or whatever. <clears throat> so if everybody go to the bank at the same time to get the money out, the bank do not have all this cash to fulfill the requirement because of the FDIC requirement, the Federal Reserve, uh, not the Federal Reserve, the FDIC, oh yeah, that's the Federal, the FDIC requirement, 
is only 3% or uh, up to 10%. That's it, right? So that's why uh, previously they have a yellow fast movement. Everybody saying go to the bank and take out the money. They cannot, you know, they don't have the up. They don't have the money. There's going to be have bank run because of the fictional reserve uh, banking requirement. So, and most of them thinking uh, twenty one million uh, because of the ten percent, which which is twenty uh, times ten, which is uh, two hundred and ten million paper money. And they are going to do fractional reserve, rehypothecation, commingling, rehypothecation. Uh, you can go back to my previous video. I talk about that extensively. And people talk about back is good. Even a lot of YouTubers talk about back is good. No, no, that is not good because they're going to rehypothecate the Bitcoin. Uh, they basically count the asset more than five times or same asset, just the same asset five times. And then they call mingling with other worthless asset like the fed, uh, the treasury, the fiat currency, and those toxic uh, asset. They're going to commingling with other asset, and then they they're going to create multiple copies of commodity that will be traded on the future market, which will suppress the price of Bitcoin. So this is ha this already happened in gold and silver. So this will be the results will not be different for Bitcoin if the volumes uh, build up on the future market. So probably this will be the end of the 21 million Bitcoin. So that will be, so just one thing I want to point out, uh, forget, about the, forget about those ETF, forget about those things. Those are paper Bitcoin. Those are not the real thing. If you don't own your private key, you don't own your coin, period. Anyway, um, so let me know what you think about this uh, future, uh, the future market volume can be harmful for Bitcoin. And also, uh, what market cycle are we at right now? Are we in uh, capitu uh, capitulation, depression, or anger stage? Please comment below. I would like to hear from you. What cycle are we at right now? That would be interesting to see what you guys think. Uh, please comment below. If you find this video helpful, smash the like button, subscribe, also share with your friends, and make sure you comment as well. That will help my ranking in YouTube. And I do all this video uh, because of the support of, of you guys. I like to hear uh, your comment. I read every single comment and I try to respond to you. Uh, I respond to all the comment um, uh, as soon as possible, but sometimes it's difficult, but I respond to your comment. I respond to all the comment. So please comment, share, subscribe, and like uh, if you find this information helpful. Uh, helpful. Also, you can follow me on Twitter as well. Uh, remember, crypto deep divers, we the people take control of our money. Stay wise, stay safe. Peace. I'm not a financial advisor. Investing in cryptocurrency or ICO has inherent risk. Please use a due diligence.